it's just coming up to eight o'clock on a Saturday morning. Not so many people are about today and I'm on my walk. And I'm just going to go down to the seafront, but I'm going to take you a somewhat different way today. I'm going to go through the park. Uh, I've done this before, of course, and uh, morning. And I'm going to have a look, see what the sea is doing. There is a cloudless sky above me. Let me see if I can show you a little bit of the cloudless sky. And as I walk down to the seafront, it being a Saturday, of course, a lot of people have a bit of a lie-in. Other people are doing Saturday shifts. Everybody works on different times. It got me thinking about work. I was uh, sitting in bed last night reading a book called Just Beyond Yonder, or Just Over Yonder, by Humphrey Phelps. It's a book that is set in just after the war, but it's part of a series of books that Humphrey Phelps, who was a farmer, writing in the 70s of the 1930s and 40s and the change in farming and the attitude to changing in farming as new equipment were coming on board, new technologies, for example, the tractor and the differences of early tractors um, as the horses were being phased out, the advantages of foot horses over tractors, and particularly on muddy ground, which was what he was talking about yesterday. I mean, it's a, uh, well, he wasn't talking about it yesterday, I was reading that yesterday. Here we go, out into the bright sunshine. Just coming out here as we enter the park. Have a look, I'll show you. All the dog walkers, of course, are out which is good to see, I suppose, They're walking their dogs for the day ahead with the sun blaring into our face. On my right, how much of that I, you can see, I don't know, is the skate park. There are actually some kids, or young people, I should say, out there already. And here, I've never seen anyone play these table tennis boards. And up ahead, I notice a, it looks like a Morrison's, trolley, shopping trolley, look at that, just deposited. Is it though, or is it Waitrose? No, this is Morrison's. Yeah, outrageous. And outside, and abandoned. I dare say somebody, it looks like someone, they've actually, looking back at it, they've had a good go at it and they've ripped one of the wheels off. Anyway, um, so this was farming. Farming back at that point, lots of camaraderie. I, I know I talk about this quite a lot. I, either, I don't believe in reincarnation or anything like that, but I do, I do feel that it's, it's, it's in our roots in some way, in, in our DNA somewhere, in some distant past. We were all farmers. We were all trying to get something to eat, grow food, have something to eat. I think that's um, something that, we would, I don't know what that was, spooky sound. Um, yeah, so growing food, of course, has to be one of the most basic, almost primeval things that we would do, I would have thought. Anyway, back then, a lot of people were involved in the old farming process. And it was interesting because the author, the series of books starts off with the author as a small child in a farming family deciding that that is what he wants to do although his wife, uh, his mother doesn't want him to go into that because she knows how little money there is but he does and he grows up and the, the book, I'm on the third of the series and he's now in a position where he has worked as a, an apprenticed farmer um, as a, a labourer and done all the different jobs and he's described those jobs in the book and now he's in that position where he is married he's taken on a farm I guess a lease of a farm he's gone through all the legal side of things and 
He's got this relatively large farmhouse and these old buildings, a bit dilapidated, and everything's in a bit of a state. And he's taking it on. And he's got his, his little old tractor. And I think it was something like 85 acres, he said. This is quite nice, this little bit of a wild garden here. This is, I think this is where the um, Victorian pond or lake or whatever you would call it was here at one time and the, now we have a bit of wildlife for bees and butterflies and things not terribly wild at the moment because it's all been very much planted let's go through the other side of this this is Homefield Park by the way we'll go through the other side of this through the gates this was all farmland at one time, worked on by labourers doing their job of cultivating the ground and making it ready and viable to grow food on. And I think of it as being a very noble job in the past, although you know, to be a farm labourer, I guess everybody was that, and it was probably looked down on a bit by those that had moved into the town. And yet those same people would have relied on the food that was grown and would have enjoyed that food. They just wouldn't have wanted to do it themselves, which is an interesting concept. It's very bright in the early morning sunshine as it rises up. Anyway, so that's where he is there's markets to go to there are merchants that call on him and try and sell him fertilizers and seeds and all sorts of paraphernalia for the farm and it's so interesting reading about that way of life a way of life that will never come back i don't know what it would be like now to be a modern day farmer where you are basically using contractors that the same camaraderie is not there that you're not connected to a village i've got the cold coming again when i say cold i mean um the cold in the atmosphere look more limes all around here lime trees used as avenue trees and the leaves as we saw yesterday, all over the place, look at that. That's not a lime. That is a sycamore. It's like a weed, a sycamore. Look at the leaves in the sycamore there. And then what looks like a, a bay tree. Is that a bay tree? That can't be a bay, maybe it is. And then uh, above me is a, a U. But it's lovely seeing the light. Look at this, the light through, I don't know how it comes out on the GoPro, the light through the uh, limes. They are very beautiful trees. And what I understand actually reading Oliver Rackham, who was an ecologist, who has, uh, I think, recently died in the last 20 years or something. Um, he, leading authority, uh, says that uh, back in the day, in the primitive, after the Ice Age and things like that, um, so however many thousands of years ago that was, um, which I keep reading about these things, I just can't get into my head the actual dates of these things but anyway he says that lime trees was one of the principal trees down in the south on the south um, well southeast south where I am but you don't really see them growing in the wild anymore and they're very much used as town trees so it is unusual to stumble across a natural lime I think so many of them were felled by the Neolithics. St. John's, that's a lovely building, isn't it? I think that's very nice. 
So yes, anyway, so all this reading on farming, and I've been reading loads of books on this sort of way of life with the horses and so on. Morning. Um, another author, George Ewan Evans, I think it is, was a, a writer of this sort of stuff, talking about um, horses. Morning. Um, horses being used on farms and the type of horses, the work they did and why and how they used horses and the resistance of course when other contraptions came in. Absolutely fascinating and of course the destruction of the village and the way of life that farming's, farmers had and the fact that it then turned from a way of life into an industry and as I've mentioned that before in various different places as I've spoken about this, the, I suppose, the, the, the enjoyment really of, of actually doing something that may be hard work, but is, uh, morning, um, that is hard work, but is also more than just pleasurable, um, but it's sort of the essence of life, I suppose, in the, in the way that the, a community or a village would come together. Look at these great big palatial houses. Now, now that is a, a massive Georgian. Is it Georgian? Looks Georgian, it might be Victorian. It's sort of on the end, I think. Great big villa, probably um, Victorian villa. Here's another, look at that beautiful looking place. I remember that was up for sale some time ago, a few years ago, and I would love to have bought that. It's now flats. I would love to have bought that, turned it into a little studio. But it was well above, sorry about the washout of the video there. <laughs> it was well above my station. More of them. Look, all along here, these massive grand or is it this one that was for sale it might have been this one i think it was i think it was this one look at that almost getting down to the seafront now how about that very beautiful this road it's a very nice road laid out so as you can see this is on the east side of worthing going towards brighton far from where I live of course. Some of these are care homes, it's true. And this one there looks like it probably is now, across the road. Um, but in their day, I guess this, this side on the east would have been a lot more affluent than some of the trips that I've done on the east where you've seen the terraces, of course, you can see that by the this, the, the type of houses here, nestled down childcare and um, nursery. A couple of big reception rooms in there for the kids to play in. I, absolutely ideal, lovely, but historic in their own right. So, I'm trying to stay on my theme as I walk along because I, I re realise that when I do these I get somewhat sidetracked. It's first thing in the morning and try to sort of get my brain into active mode. We came up to, up to the A259 now, the coastal road, um, and we're going to cross over. The sea is just in front of me. We'll make our way down there. Let's see if we can get across here without too much hanging about. Look at these great big flats here. Ugly things, in my mind. On a seaside town, perfectly fine for an inner city development, I imagine, but here we go. Spratt and Son, estate agents and surveyors. Chartered surveyors. I don't know what, what that means, chartered surveyors. And here, car park, probably for the flats or whatever, with a nice new sign just being opened up and then we'll start to get down to the coast and on the seafront and see what the sea's doing see if it's um, in or out this is always i love this sort of uh, building here with the conical 
roof above it on the corner here. N new parade, it's called. We'll get down here, the sun is blistering on me. And I think we come de back down to this rather grotesque building. Here we are. Look at that. Isn't that ugly? That is the tallest building in Worthing. And it's horrible. That's my opinion. There's the Bayside Social. I don't know what that does. It's like a social club for everybody, I pr presume, in the flats. And there they are, getting themselves organised. And in the, in the far distance, the pier there. Let's go down and have a look, see what the sea is doing. As we stomp over the stones, the shingle of the beach. It's, it's, it's in. It's sort of in. I don't know if it's on the turn. I'm not quite sure what it's doing this morning. Let's go this side of the brakes. <coughs> These wonderful archetypal seaside, um, not wind brakes, sea brakes, sea defences to stop the beach from shifting all the stones across. I tell you what I'm trying to get at is the farming seems to me to be proper work. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? And I think to myself, what am I doing? I, I have this craving. I, I don't know, I've missed the boat now. I mean, I'm in my late 50s and I've probably missed the boat and I'm probably craving a life style that I can't possibly ever get, even if I had a little small holding. You'd never go back to those days of farming in the old-fashioned way. You'd never get there, unfortunately. And I suppose part of my reading and my fascination with the history of it is that, is that, that lamenting that, in a way, I was, sort of was born out of time. We've got all the modern conveniences of of, of the modern world, obviously, but there's something, I don't know, there's something missing. But we certainly have a lot more freedom, I guess. I don't know, I just find that whole era, that whole community, perhaps it's, I miss a community, and yet, in some ways, the communities that we have these days are online, like Facebook and things like that. For me, it doesn't do it. It doesn't do it at all. In fact, I, I have a Facebook group, Bald Explorer Facebook group, but I'm sort of rarely, rarely there. I, I don't know, I just find that's, that sort of the screen relationship with people a bit devoid of real life and, and comfort. As I come up the beach here, we get this wonderful string of terraces, or a terrace. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Look at the colours on that. That, I think, is lovely. That is what a seaside should look like. Not the monstrosity of that hideous thing. People would disagree with me, I know, and that is, of course, a prerogative. One of the things that I've been doing, as you will know, in this test of vlogging each day, is turning off the comments. And you could argue, well, you're, you're preaching for a community, and yet you're turning off the comments, which is very true, and I have. And actually, I can tell you, that I have very much enjoyed turning off the comments. There is that sort of sense that everybody wants a Doberman. Is it, what is it, a Doberman? Not a Doberman, that's a dog. An endorphin, oh, I don't know what they call it, that sort of chemical hit that you, that you are craving by continually looking to see if someone's made a comment on your video or hit the like button or that sort of thing. That doesn't bother me at all, and in fact, I found my peace of mind from those videos by not having the comments on that. Maybe frustrating for you guys. 
watching and you may be wanting to put your 10 pence worth in and, and tell me how awful I am and how wrong I am on certain things or, or even to praise me in some small way. That may be true, but I have found it very rewarding not to. Can we get through here? No. Here we are. These are the old um, beach huts that we used to have. Well, they're still there, but there used to be a string of them and then they cut a dirty great hole in them so that you could get into Beach House Green, where at one time Peter Pan's was and behind where that monstrosity of a building was the, uh, the old um, paddling pool. But we'll cut through here and avoid all of that so that we can get a glimpse of Beach House Park which is a Georgian, very large and lush establishment. There it is. And a few people out walking their dogs, as you can see. And I'm coming to the end of this video. I've got to get back. I've got logs coming today. In fact, John, my log man, he said, have you ordered some for December? I said, yes, I have actually. He said, well, you better order some for February as well. He said, I'm so busy. I'm booked up to February. So many people are ordering logs. I think it's the scare of the energy crisis. So even though we might have blackouts, which will affect how often I can upload or make, excuse me, make videos, if we, have the, if we get to that, at least I can warm the house, cook, and keep uh, my clothes dry. If, and I can wash them by hand in my in my tin bath and that may be you may laugh at that but if the energy crisis comes to the point that nobody else can have hot water and you can't get your washing machine going i can at least wash my stuff i'm relatively self-contained and it's in times of crisis like this you suddenly think actually these old ways of doing things relying on old-fashioned things have some merit anyway we'll see what happens that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I will leave you a view back through the trees towards the sea. And thank you for watching.